It's a film crew here at the moment. Right. A friend of mine's doing a documentary on booksellers, and I'm a bookseller. It would be very interesting to stop somebody on the street and say, if I say rare book dealer, what do you think of? Older man, elbow patches. Tweed. <laughs> the Strand was founded by my grandfather in an area called Book Row. Our business was started by our father in 1925. People always asked him, how did you get all three daughters to work for you? And he would say, I guess I'm just lucky. In the 1950s, there were 368 bookstores in New York City. Today, I went and counted, and there were 79. One of the things I remember about those guys, they were very irritated if you wanted to buy a book. They were there so they could read all day. Collecting is about the hunt. The internet has killed the hunt. What the internet did was change the way we talked about what was rare. For a lot of dealers, it was devastating, and it destroyed their livelihood. A lot of people wonder, where's the future of this industry going? It is consistently my experience as a younger dealer that I am talking to older dealers who are so pessimistic, and they're saying, I don't know what you're going to do. And I'm like, I have so many ideas. We're part of a boom in independent bookshops that really engage with their neighborhood in a way that the old chain stores never did. I think it has to come with a love of the material. A good bookseller absolutely is another kind of discoverer and thinker of history. The people that I see reading actual books on the subway are mostly in their 20s. This is one of the few encouraging things you will ever see in a subway. There's obviously a love for it. It's frustrating at times. Is this something you wake up and you say, thank God, I found this? What else would you have to do? Here's an unusual title, Amish Love. Wow, that's quite a picture.